Okay, so these pictures on this wall are all from one individual, uh, Mr. Odeski. Mr. Odeski is a guest of Illinois from New Jersey. Uh, when he came here, he was put immediately into a, into a Supermax prison. Um, not for anything he did at all in Illinois, but because he was labeled um, as a troublemaker in New Jersey. Um, he's a diabetic, type 1 diabetic, has been for years. And one of the problems with being a diabetic is you have poor circulation. They found, they alleged that he had a paper clip in his cell. So they confiscated all of his stuff. Uh, paper clips are contraband attempts, uh, including his shoes. So he was left barefoot on a, con on a bare concrete floor, began to get a blister. The wonderful doctor they had down there gave him some cream for it, didn't give him antibiotics for it. It went on for months and months and months, and eventually they found that he had ulcerated sores which had gone through the bone. Uh, then they took him to an outside doctor. The outside doctor said this man needs to get an antibiotics, he needs to have a special vacuum shoe that sucks out the pus that comes out. They didn't do any of that. They didn't do any of that. So it kept getting worse, kept getting worse. Finally, they put him on a bed, wouldn't let him get up at all because they thought he was injuring himself rather than they were doing bad treatment. Kind of didn't exactly strap him down, but said you cannot get out of this bed. Um, and did give us some antibiotics. And then we closed him, which in general is a very good thing. But he got transferred to Pontiac. And on arrival at Pontiac, he said, you know, I'm supposed to get an infirmary or infirmary transfer because he was in like the end of the hospital in Tams. And they said, no, no, we don't do all that here. Sorry. So they assigned him to the fourth floor. We had to walk up the stairs. And by the time he got up to his cell, all the blister had burst. Everything had gone that they had spent the whole time doing. And again, they decided this wasn't a real problem, so they didn't have to take him to the doctor, they didn't have to give him antibiotics. At one point, a nurse fainted because of the smell of his foot and they were changing the bandage. Um, and he now has gangrene. Um, he's going finally to the University of Illinois um, Medical School up here. Um, they're not always following the directions, but um, they've now packed his foot with the uh, antibiotic beads and they're trying to save it. He's been in pain now for, I think, Eight years, five years. And his position, the doctor was, cut off my foot. I'm sick of this. And the doctor's refusing to do that. Probably a good thing. But you can imagine how much pain and how much suffering you have to go through to say, I don't want to go to a doctor anymore. Just cut off my foot. I want to be done with that. So one of the ways he deals is through art. And this is the art you see behind him. Some of it is fairly angry. Um, this one identifies his doctor um, at TAMS. That's his picture of how he views the doctor. It's not a kindly portrait. Um, <laughs> so we're suing on his behalf to try to get him some treatment, but it's not just him. The entire system is like this. We have, we spend less in Illinois on medical care per prisoner than every other state in the country. California spends about seven times what we do on medical care, and they're the ones that the United States Supreme Court held as unconstitutional. We only spend a seventh of that. So we have a class action case going through the whole state saying that medical care is so bad, it amounts to torture, it amounts to punishing people instead of treating them. Which is exactly what's happening here. If a man says, cut off my foot, that's an indication to me that he's being tortured. So those are the kinds of cases we have. We have a similar one for mental health. We have a similar one for uh, Vienna Correctional Center where they have 400 people, Brent? 400 people living in what, shoot, what was meant as a warehouse. So it doesn't have a men's, it only has a men's room and a women's room, very much like that right here. Uh, for 400 people, they have a couple of showers, that's great, but for 400 people. And when they moved them in there, the windows were all broken out. It was summer, so okay, not such a big deal except birds come in, and birds are not very well house trained. I won't go into details, but um, it was a little messy. Some of them still live there, but then it got cold. And they still didn't have money to fix the windows. So they put boards over the windows. So now it's dark and there's no air. And of course there's no air conditioning. It's hot in here, I realize, but imagine having to live this way with this many people all the time, never getting cool and never having any privacy. There are really 400 people in the warehouse. So that's what's going on all over the state. We're trying to do something about it. Um, we don't get any government money, so we're dependent on people like you um, to make this happen. Um, and we're really glad you came out. One of our tasks is not just to sue, but to educate the world as to what's really going on in prison, who is really there, that it's real people. And I hope if you get nothing else, you see that there are some extremely creative, 
feeling people who are stuck inside our prison system who are willing to share their heart with everybody here. Um, anything else I should say? Thank you.